and I'm going to say a very good afternoon to Odilon de Varine and uh, mm -hmm. Bertrand Verdizier, um, who are from Gosset. Odilon is our seller master and Bertrand handles our exports. So good afternoon, gentlemen. How are you? Good. Good afternoon, Kate. Feeling very uh, well. So the, the, the two of them have joined us today to be talking about a new uh, cuvee from Gosset, the Duzon de, de Cave. Um, and so uh, Bertrand is helpfully holding up the, the box. Um, so um, Bertrand, if you would be so kind, could you give us a little background to, to Gosset, please? Of course. Thank you, Kate. Yes. Um, uh, a bit of history to start. Very, always very important to, to remind of the roots of the, the, the company, of the, of the Maison. As you probably know, uh, Gosset um, is the longest running winery in Champagne, still in activity. Um, founded by Pierre Gosset, 1584. Obviously a time when the, uh, the terroir of Champagne produces uh, still wines as final product, um, evolving toward sparkling wines during the course of the 18th century. But I think it's always important to remember that the wine was first at Gosset and that the bubbles came later in the history, quite important in the DNA of the, uh, of the Maison. Um, with the bubbles, of course, come the vessel of the bubble, um, the vessel for the wine. So of course the antique bottle, which is uh, uh, which is uh, representing uh, very much the uh, uh, the maison as well. And of course the twelve years will come into the uh, this uh, specific uh, bottle again. Um, 16 generations of the Gosset family have run the company until the early 90s when they passed the company to the, the family of, uh, of our president, today Jean-Pierre Cointreau. Um, and uh, uh, so the, the family uh, story continues and it's very important in the, uh, the way Gosset is run and I guess in the type of, in the way we, uh, monitor and run our uh, our range, and uh, and it's important to know as well that the new generation is is uh, is currently uh, joining the uh, currently joining the, the group. Uh, so the the story goes on, and of course in the story of, in terms of size, Bertrand, can you give us size? an idea of where, yes. of where Gosling sits? Yes. So yeah. Uh, it's true that uh, Gosset is often seen as a, as a, as a, of course, house in Champagne. We are a small house in Champagne, and we are one of the smallest, actually. We are often associated with other names, other family operations in Champagne. Uh, but if we are associated with them, uh, we are certainly, in general, much smaller than they are. And here, the idea is not a competition who's the biggest, who's the smallest. It's just that for what we are concerned, the size of Gosset, which is uh, roughly 80,000 cases, is, is a quite a modest size, but certainly a size that enables us to make the type of wine that we're making uh, and in quality and in diversity, and probably um, in trying to keep, um, you know, uh, I mean, to stay very, very much uh, on the edge of, uh, of, of providing the most interesting wines, if, if, we, if, we, if we can do that. Uh, we are very eager to uh, propose small parcels, and that's what we've done in the last few years, releasing consequently um, or successively uh, different uh, parcels of, of very uh, small quantities um, and exploring different uh, ideas uh, around the terroir of Champagne, 100% Pinot Noir, for instance, 100% Pinot Meunier, that was extremely new for, for Gosset. Um, and uh, I think our role in Champagne is to provide, alongside the core range, 
alongside Grand Reserve, which is our flagship QA, is to be able to propose and to continue to propose, you know, small parcel like this. Obviously, um, in, in this uh, successive uh, limited edition, there's been um, the, the, the big brother of the 12 years, which was the 15 years a few years ago. Great, thank you very much. And so, Odion, um, over to starting with you, uh, finally. Yeah. Um, can you can you talk to us a little about this idea of the um, the, the series of the fifteen on, which was the fifteen year old, which was launched um, uh, three or four years ago, yeah. and um, mm -hmm. and then the subsequent dues on, which we're which we're looking at today. Mm -hmm. Well, even if the idea is quite the same, because the <clears throat> the idea is on aging, is on time. The wine is obviously different because the base is not the same at all. Um, but the main idea was um, to take a real place to the time. Um, it's, not, it's not a vintage. It's based on the year 2006, but it's not a vintage. We've got a proportional reserve wine in it. And it's not a Grand Reserve made at that time. It's a very special blend made for aging to have um to propose the time to propose the, the time we don't have anymore every of us um and that's the idea the idea to have a, a wine that nourish from the lees for 12 years in the cellar um showing as bertrand told you showing that champagne is a wine first and the bubbles are just there to prevent the wine from oxidation to help the wine to express its aromas um, but the main idea is wine and age. Um, I think that most of the time now, the vintages are quite complicated for many people. And I am. For me, it's complicated because uh, I can't put in my mind all the vintages you can have in Champagne, in Burgundy, in Alsace, uh, Bordeaux, uh, Loire, whatever in France. But for you in London, it's quite it's much more complicated because you've got wines coming from the whole world. So what is the great vintage in California, in North California, Oregon, uh, and whatever? It's, for me, too complicated. So it was a new idea, not talking about vintage, talking about age. Okay. Um, so if people would like to, um, if they've opened your bottles, then if you could pour yourselves a glass, um, <clears throat> we will talk. Um, about this wine. Uh, so, Odinon, you said it's from a base of 2006, but it's not a vintage wine, and it's not a, a non-vintage wine as such. It so, is. Um, it is a non-vintage. <laughs> it is a non-vintage, but it's, it's age declared. So, so um, Bertrand, could you just take us through the technical details um, of the wine in terms of its blend um, and its crew and so on? Yes, so obviously I will, uh, I, I will let Odilon uh, give you more details about how the wine was made. But no, go ahead, go the, ahead. The features, the features of the wine, and then we can discuss the different steps. So as we said, this is a 2006 base uh, with a proportion of reserve wines, with a tiny proportion of reserve wines. We will come back on that, but that's something that's, Typical at Gosset. If you know our uh, non vintages, you know that the policy at Gosset is on little amounts of reserve wines, quite distinctive from many other houses in Champagne. Um, so, 2006, a touch of reserve wines, obviously, age 12 years on the lease. That's the strong message that we want to address on the bottle, which means that the wine has been disgorged actually at the end of last year that was done in december for this uh, this run and um the blends originally sorry i should have said that earlier again very classically for gosset you know chardonnay pinot noir nearly 50 percent each so really balanced between the two um based on very classic and, and renowned uh Grand Cru, Premier Cru, not only, but you're talking about Menis sur Roger for uh, Encraman, for Côte des Blancs, Villers Marmerie, which is 
always mm. a favorite at Gosset as well, which uh, I think Odilon you use a lot in our blonde and which is a very nice complement from Montagne de Reims in the in the Chardonnay uh, in the Chardonnay uh, uh, grape, balanced with other classics, i.e. of course our birthplace, very always very impressive wines from i.e. Uh, with their structure and so on. Ambonnet, another beautiful cru. Uh, Maroy sur Aïe. So, if you want, it's not a, typically a selection of many, many, many different cru, but it's, it's, you know, you've got a few very strong characters there. 12 years on the list, disgorge in December, and a dosage of 7 grams per liter was applied. Um, so, quite for, for once, quite a recent disgorgement for Gosset. Uh, but but obviously the wine will be uh, hopefully enjoyed for many more years to come. So that's more or less the uh, the skeleton, if you want, uh, of the wine here. Mm -hmm. That's great, thank you. And we, we with no malolactic, of course. Thank you. Um, so we do have a technical sheet which which does um, detail the um, the crew villages um, used in the blend. Um, so Odilon, this was this was um, a wine that you went in right at the beginning um, to to design for long aging. And so um, obviously there are several choices, and with Gosset, always attention to detail. Um, why did you choose to do this with 2006? Um, that's that's quite an interesting year to choose. And why did you choose the, the villages and the crew that, that you selected to support this blend? Well, um, it's not because it's a 2006 that we choose these base wines, um, uh, or this base year. Um, as you know, 06 was a very ripe year. If you have tasted any champagne coming from 06 recently, you can see that it's very ripe and very round. And, um, the idea was to, to make a blend for the one to nourish and to take uh, depth and, 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 and structure from the lees, not from the wine at the beginning. It was the idea. So that's why the blend is totally different. Um, we wanted to have a fresh and, and, and wine that can, once again, that can take the lees to have the deepness of the wine, not right from the beginning. You know, when we are doing a, a vintage, we want to, to focus on the year, to make a photo of a specific year. This is not the case. It's a base um, with a blend made for aging and to take roundness by maturity, not age. We are too old to, to talk about age, um, just maturity. Um, so that's why it's a very specific blend. At, at the origin. Um, uh, what else? Um, the, the, so um, we're, we're talking about the crews. So obviously with the crew that you chose, you chose um, crews that, that added you, 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 I think you've described it almost like having a spice rack um, and they are ingredients that you can add. And also you have, um, decisions that you make during the the um, putting together of this blend and mm. the dosage and so on. So describe a little um, sort of your your approach here. Well, as you know, as you probably know, uh, at Gosset, all the, the tasting are made blind, even for, for, for this. So the crews are more a consequence than a, a, a purpose. Um, all the tasting are blind. So if we've got Menil sur Roger, Aviz, Cramont, or Villers Marmory, it's because they, they bring something in the blend. It's not because they are coming from there. Um, it's the same for the dosage. All the dosage are made by blind tasting. We, we try several amount of sugar to have the right balance with sugar. And then we have a secondary kind of tasting, which is the choice of the wine we use to make the liqueur. For this one, it's, the, liqueur, the liqueur is only Chardonnay. And uh, to be really honest, it's our Blanc de Blanc that we open the bubbles to, to make the, 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 the liqueur. 
um, just to, to have uh, this hint of freshness uh, after 12 years of rest in the deepness of the, of the cellar, the, the wine needs um, something new, something fresh. Uh, that's why we use this liquor on this amount of sugar. Um, the fact and that... We, talked, um, we, we mentioned just in the introduction that the wine has a proportion of, um, a small proportion of reserve wines. Um, do you want to talk about, about that a little bit? Um, how much is it and what's your approach with reserve wines? Yes, so reserve wine, you're right. We've got a special approach at Gosset for the reserve wine. Uh, we don't store them by year or by village. We store them um, by interest they can bring in the, in the blend, in the future blend. So we've got tanks with freshness, we've got tanks with deepness, with richness, with uh, aromas, with uh, length, uh, and, and so on. But I can't tell you where they come from and which year is it exactly. So we've got in that wine 8% of reserve wine, but I can't tell you exactly what is the year and where they come from. Um, it's, uh, I think it's, for me, uh, and the best way to store the, the reserve wine. I don't care if it's 15, 16, or 17, if they have no interest by themselves. So we store the wine sometimes in solera, sometimes not. Um, we've got plenty of reserve wine, but we don't use a lot. We use them as spices to complement the, uh, the blend. Mm -hmm. Is a name, yeah. Oh. And that's great. So, um, with the with the aging of the wine, so this wine has spelt, spent twelve years on its lees. Um, presumably, this is with the bottles on their sides, um, or is it? Do the do the bottles slowly, gradually end up on the on surpoint, or what's what's the approach here? Have you visited the cellar before to 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 ask this question? <laughs> Well, I, I have, but not everybody on this call has. <laughs> uh, you're right. Some people uh, have. Yeah, but... aging, aging on lees could be very dangerous because, as you know, the lees are red active. And uh, that's, that's uh, one of the interests of the lees is um, to prevent the wine from oxidation. As you know, we don't have a lot of phenolics in champagne. So that's why we've got bubbles in the wine. It's to prevent the wine from oxidation. But you can nourish the wine with the lees um, to have a, a, a different balance with oxidation and reduction. Um, but if you leave the wine too long on the lees, you will go on the bad size of reduction. That's why, once again, it depends on the cuvées, it depends on the blend, on many, many things. Um, we taste all the cuvées around every three months. And um, when they are flat on the lees, sometimes when it's becoming to turn to the reductive side, we have to riddle the bottle and put it in on the neck to still have the lees that protect from oxidation, but do not feed the wine and feed it with reduction. So, um at the end of the process in December, you disgorged this wine and um, you refreshed it with some, some dosage, which we, which we said was um, seven, seven grams a litre. Yeah. Um, what, was your, what was your sort of aim when you started out? This is uh, having, a, having a sort of aged declared wine, um, not a vintage, but with the 15 years and with the 12. Um, is this is this echoing sort of the whiskey um, industry in in talking about age in this way? What what's what's the idea behind having these age declared wines? And what's your what's your in your head? Um, the idea was to have uh, um, I don't know what is the English term a repair uh, uh, a mark a uh, mark uh, mark yeah mm -hmm. and um, a point of reference. A point, yeah, no. point of reference. Um, and so I, I don't know, in the future we will, I don't know yet, but we, we can have uh, um, some 8, 9, 11, uh, 20, 30, I don't know. Um, 
we decide to launch the wine when it's ready to be launched, when the right balance with freshness, with roundness, deepness is for us at the, the, the maximum. It doesn't mean that the wine is done when it's disgorged. Uh, it's like the Grand Reserve. I know some of you have been to our tasting with Bertrand in London with very old uh, uh, Grand Reserve disgorge, even more than 30 years. I think this wine uh, have a wonderful pot potential of aging because of this time on lees. Uh, it's, it's a wonderful champagne but for me it's it's more wine than a champagne uh you you you, you are on the on the wine side uh and uh, and you can store it for years just because really the 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 idea is to have the right balance that the wine can um uh, steal for years with a mark which is 12 years on the lease you can keep the 15 years it spent 15 years on the lease, you've got a mark. Because even if you've got the, the disgorgement date on the bottles, you don't know when it has been uh, bottled. So you don't have, you've got a part of the information, but you don't have the right information. You've got just a part. So we wanted to be very clear and, and with a lot of transparency that we are talking about the time they spent on lease. Um, very, uh, as I told you, very, very transparent for us. Uh, 12 years on the lease, 15 years on the lease. Next, I don't know yet. Um, we've got plenty of bottles in, in the cellar that are waiting um, to make that. Uh, that's, that's, that's actually terribly reassuring. I'm very pleased that you have plenty of, plenty of um, other things to, to come. <laughs> Um, so this wine itself, um, I, hopefully all of you have been tasting while we've been oh, talking. Yes. Um, don't forget to do that. Um, and so uh, this wine is, is um, how, how do you mean this wine to be served? Is this a, what's in your head when, you, when in terms of um, gastronomy or, um, or, or so on? Is it an aperitif wine? What's your feeling? My feeling is to have pleasure with the wine. If it's aperitive, that's great. If it's on, on the meal, and it, it's, it's great. Um, but I think this wine can have both of things. Um, when you just open a bottle, you can have it on aperitive because the freshness, the, the um, acidity is not the right term, but uh, its freshness have um, a place on aperitive because of the salinity, because of the, some iodine flavor. Um, it's very nice for a period, but you can keep it for a meal and then you've got different thing. If the bottle warm up because, of, because it's on the table, the wine will be different. You can change your glass and if you take another shape of glass, the wine will be different. Or you can, what we, what we do uh, very often here, is carrying the wine after the aperitif, just putting the wine um, a few seconds in a carafe. It's not decanting, it's just for the wine to have a breath after 12 years, uh, I would say in a gel like the bowl. So um, it has to take a breath and, and the wine is totally different. My Can we encourage, sorry, to interrupt Odeon can we encourage if you do have two glasses or a jug or a carafe to hand um, maybe whilst we're talking you could give this a go and as Odeon says we're, we're not talking about decanting the wine but we're talking about pouring um, enough into into another vessel and then into your glass to allow the to allow the champagne to take a, a little um, and as, as I think Odeon occasionally puts it in pretty respire a little breath um to to just open up and and just just experiment to see whether it does actually change um and Odilon is holding up his his beautiful gosset designed calf um bertrand was also holding up two different size uh, sizes of glasses earlier so it's worth just experimenting um with the wine itself and over time not necessarily um sort of straight out of the bottle but sort of through the evening tonight if you haven't drunk it already 
um, to just keep revisiting the wine and see how it changes. Um, for me, the best way to um, carafe the wine is to put in the carafe the, the, the right volume you need for one, two, gla three glasses, and not put the whole bowl, but just the volume you need for your glass, because here uh, I see that you're all alone. Um, just the right volume for your glass. That's all, just the breath. You don't need to put it a long time in the carafe. Um, even if I've got the same glass, the same shape, um, the one is, for me, totally different, more depth after, uh, uh, after the carafe. And the, um, once again, we are more on the wine side than uh, the bubbles have, I, I can't say they have no interest, but they have less interest in this case, in this way. Um, which presumably makes it a better, a better match for food. Um, and we were talking before about what, what we would match with this. Um, I know Odilon has something very specific in mind, um, but yeah. maybe Bertrand can, can have a few thoughts as well. You know, the best match for champagne is best friends. <laughs> and at the moment, it's an issue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the wine, I mean, we are still discovering the wine, uh, uh, you know, more or less like you, and it's, 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 it's new for, for, well, less for Dillon, but for me, for me it's, it's, still, uh, it's still new as well. And uh, I like the suppleness of this wine. Uh, I, like the, the, I like the, yes, the salinity, uh, of course, always a mirality, but I like it's not hard. It's not, a, it's not a very strong structure. It's very subtle. So I can see it's a wine that will, when you open the wine, it's quite ready already. I was expecting the wine to be more tight after 12 years of release. It is already quite open. The way I prefer the wine uh, so far, what I've experienced is the day after, with much less bubbles, like, like a white wine. And then I can't, I can't do that. I can't do that because the bottle no. is always empty after the first day. Uh, you've, got, you've got an experiment <laughs> I, I, I didn't have. But it's true. It, it's 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 really you know it's really wine. You, you, you can you can keep like this, and you can really keep the this kind of, of finesse. I, you know that that's the way I like it. For the food, I think it's going to be very flexible. You know. We're talking about sometimes vintages that are in a very kind of narrow character, sometimes very impressive vintages, 2002, uh -huh. 98, big structure. Here, it's very subtle. So, you know, it's ex extremely, I think it's extremely versatile in, in terms of food. So we know champagne it goes with food in general, but of course, any, any kind of cheese for me, I'm thinking, you know, I'm drinking that. I, I had a very nice, uh, I, don't, I don't want to compare. Oh, Dillon, don't, 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 don't listen to me. I had a very nice bottle of, uh, of, uh, of Saumur. Uh, What's recently. that? Saumur Blanc. Great bottle. Uh, now it's an area I've never and, heard of that. Uh, and she wants, it's, it's a wine that will, do the same job, you know, as a, as, as a Chablis, as a Bourgogne Blanc, or as a Sauvignon Blanc. And that's what I like about it. It covers more than just the idea of Champagne. I think it's the idea of Gosset in general. But here, you know, most of you have, have tried Gosset before. You can see that what's interesting about this wine is Gosset 100%. And every time we have a new product, my, my, uh, my excitement is to recognize the, the prints of the house. Of course, the Nobel Lactic and, and all those things. Mm. And, and oh, we like to drink wines of Champagne as wines. And, you know, so it, it's extremely versatile. So Chablis, Burgundy, Saumur Blanc, and this as well. It's in this spectrum, in my opinion. Okay. Well, 
that's that's been that's been um, hugely enjoyable, and, and I'm having to live vicariously because I don't actually have a bottle um, here to taste. So um, I'm having to I'm having to imagine and hope that sooner or later we'll all be together and we can um, we can try it all together. Um, just that's, really, Kate, just you really. Have, Kate, you have to come here. We've got twelve thousand bottles. <laughs> Well, we're, we're trying to get them sold over here. So, yeah, actually, on that point, um, I'm not sure that we've mentioned this before, but this is a limited um, limited release of, of just 12,000 bottles. Um, and we've mentioned it very briefly um, without going into too much detail. Um, but obviously, with all Glossé wines, there, there is no um, malolactic conversion. And so along with the Lee's ageing, this is obviously helping um, the, the, the elegance of the wine um, withstand the long aging that you've given it. That's, uh, that's very important for the right balance because um, I, I don't like the term avoiding. Avoiding means uh, 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 not doing something. I, I don't like it. I prefer to say that we keep the natural acid of the grapes which are tartaric and malic. Lactic is not natural in the grapes. So even if malic has more acidity in the wine, that's why we have to balance this acidity with a long aging on lease. It's true for the Grand Reserve, which is roughly four years on lease. Um, but for that one, uh, the plan was made totally differently to, to support this aging. So uh, not to support the aging, but to, to, to have uh, something coming from the lease and helping the wine. Uh, so no, keeping malic acid, is for me important when you want to store the, the, the champagne, when you want to, to, um, to age them, because it's uh, Gracefully. what will give the balance with, um, with the deepness of the wine after years and years, even after disgorgement. You need to have this freshness, the acidity to, to, uh, to continue having the freshness and the delicacy on the palate. And for this, uh, for the same reason, we're not using any oak at Gosset, is that correct? This is correct, yeah. So um, overall, we've got um, hopefully something um, that, that you're finding very fresh, very complex um, and quite gastronomic. Um, you're all very quiet on chat. So I'm assuming that between the three of us, um, Bertrand and Odilon and myself, we've covered a lot of the information information. Um, I'm going to start to wrap up because um, we're, we're sort of coming to the, to the end of the session. But if anybody um, would like to ask a question, um, or if there's something that we haven't covered, um, it would be uh, the moment to do so. Um, because if not, uh, I'm going to thank Odilon and Bertrand very, very much for introducing us to this, to this cuvee. My pleasure. Um, I hope you uh, have all enjoyed tasting it with, along with us today. Oh, uh, Guy looks like he no, has a question. No, no, not Guy. Oh, I'm sorry, Odilon. <laughs> I've got to ask you a question. <laughs> quick, quick one. Um, are you going to be doing any magnums at any um, available opportunity by any chance? And to piggyback on that, is there anything else on the horizon that you're going to be launching shortly? And will that be in bottles and magnums as well? Mm -hmm. Well, I can't tell you everything, Guy. I'm sure you uh, can. <laughs> but you will have mags of the 12 years, yes. Ah. Thank you. Well, uh, Bertrand, please let, let us know how many I can get my hands on, please. And uh, Yes, uh, so a reminder about the total... Sorry. There's a question on ageing from Peter, I think. Um, ah. where, is, where is Peter? I think you're unmuted. No? Peter, maybe you can unmute yourself. No. We can read yeah. the question. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I just wondered, obviously, you know, you talk about the needing the malic acid for ageability, etc. So how long do you think, um, or what would your, what would you think is an ideal length of time to age this particular wine? Hmm. Tricky question. <laughs> Tricky question. Um, honestly, for the moment, I don't know. Um, I have stored here more than 2,000 bottles to follow the aging um, 
years to years. Um, in my opinion, if the Grand Reserve is still fresh and still elegant after 30 years, um, this one is at least good for 30 years. Sure. And, and um, forgive me, but the 15 year old, yeah. what vintage is that? Um, that's not, uh, is that based on, um, again, not based, but what's the majority vintage in the 15 year old? Nine, 1998. Okay, and and would you say it's a similar sort of ageability? I haven't tried the fifteen year old. I don't know. But. Um. Well, I have to be very honest. Um, for the for the fifteen years, um, we uh, forget. It's not the right term, but we 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 forget some bubbles to see the aging, and. Uh, most of the time, it's a tasting that it's uh, just share with some friends and happy few coming there. And with the 15 years, we wanted to um, to share this experiment with uh, many people. But with the 12 years, we made the wine f in this purpose, which is different. Um, you've got more, I would say, um, mm, more maturity in the 15, not because it spent three years more, but because of the blend at the beginning. As I told you, to support the, 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 the aging, we need to have a wine that is very fresh and very young at the beginning, to be balanced with the lees, and, and, and that's all. To keep the freshness after 12 years. Uh, the 15 was not made in, in this um, idea. It was just a try at the beginning. Okay. Um, there's just one, one other question on, um, there's some excitement about the Magnums. Will the Magnums be released at the same time or are we sticking with the Gosset idea that they'll, um, they'll be held until you feel that they're ready? I think that we have to release them at the same time, um, just because the experiment is different. And um, of course you will have more, um, a, a one totally different in mags compared to bottles. Um, but, but you, you, your question is, is interesting because most of the time we launch the mags two or three years after the bottles yeah. for Rosé, for Grand Reserve, for Vintages, for Celebres, of course. We store the Magnums a bit longer. But in this case, which is really a new idea, a new concept, I wanted to have this, the two bottles on the same time with the same wine at the beginning um, uh, because it's not for the same occasions. Okay, well, I can feel another tasting coming on where we taste um, magnums and bottles next to each other. I think that would be um, I'm sorry. great fun. I think we're all, we're all up for that one. So um, we'll all be on the next Eurostar over to Champagne as soon as we're allowed to be. Mm -hmm. Um, I think on that point, um, uh, that's the questions have stopped coming in. So um, hopefully I've covered everything. Um, and it remains for me to, oh, Bertrand, you want to say something? Yes. Uh, sorry to take the opportunity, but it's a way to, to, to answer a guy's question as well uh, about uh, new release uh, in the very short term, the magnums of 2012 vintage and the magnums of Celebris 2007 are nearly ready to be shipped. So, voila, that's, uh, I take the opportunity to mention that. Guy, it's, it's nearly ready to go. Okay. Um, so, thank you everybody for joining us this afternoon. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the champagne. Um, I know that we'll follow up with everybody um, afterwards. Uh, Rebecca kindly posted the tech sheet in the chat um, at the beginning of this session. Um, and if you have any questions at all, um, you can either contact me or whoever invited you to the Zoom. And, and um, it just remains to me to say thanks, everybody. Thank you, Bertrand and Odilon. And um, please okay. continue to try the campaign over the next few hours and maybe... Um, Tell me yes. what you what you had it with um, this evening. And um, anyway, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you guys for for giving us your wisdom. Thank you very much.